Today we're going to look at influential points and what it means for a point to be influential. So here I have a, a, a data set similar to the one that you have, but not exactly the same. All right. What we're going to try to see is the effect removing points has on the regression equation. So here's a regression equation. I just threw some points down on this and just plotted some points. This one is kind of like one of your points. This one is kind of like one of your points. But what we're going to do today is we're going to remove the outliers and see what happens. Okay, so here, here's an outlier, right, Bruno? Okay, here's an outlier, right, Jamaira? So what would happen if I remove this outlier? It would look pretty. Okay. Our R would change, right? Is it going to get stronger or weaker? Stronger, because this point might, is, is way out from the, from the general trend, right? Now, this point has a positive residual, right? So when I remove this, which way will our line move down? Will it move will it move, will, which way will our line move? Will it move down or will it move up? Down. Down. Why will it move down, Yovanique? Because you said so. <laughs> I did, didn't I? All right. It has a positive residual, so the line will actually move down to create more positive residuals. Because if I take a large positive number out, then our line's going to slide down so that the residual is all equal zero again. Does that make sense? So let's see what happens. So I'm going to remove this point. Watch our R value. Watch the line change. Slope's 0.44. Let's see what happens. Remove. Okay. See how the slope slid down. The R value went up. Right? Does that make sense? Okay, I'm going to put that point back in now. And okay, there it is. Oh, maybe not in the exact same spot. Right? Now I'm going to move, remove this point, the other outlier. Okay? What will happen now if I remove this one? Will the R value go up or down? Up. Up? Why? This one has a very small negative residual. So will the line move that much? Not really. Okay. The R value will probably decrease. Let's check. This is the same kind of guess. Ready? One, two, three, gone. Oh, R value decrease. Did the line move at all? No. So one of these points is called an influential point. Which one is influential? The, the one I just removed or the first one I removed? First one. Why is that one influential? You all saw the first one. No one saw the second one. Why did you all say the first one? Because it influenced the line to move logically. Good. When I remove this point, the line moves a lot, doesn't it? It makes it influential. When I remove the other point, did the line move that much? No. So that means it's not influential. All right. So we'll leave this out. We're going to try to experiment with that. And this is spider monkey data set. Now I have to apologize at first. I spelled length incorrectly. Go figure, Mr. Branch, spelling something incorrectly. The T and the H got switched. There's no I before, T before each rule. Like there's an I before you rule. So it confused me a little bit. All right. But you guys have this data set, correct? Now I started out asking you guys to find outliers. Okay. Were you able to find an outlier long? Did it take you long to find an outlier long? You got it? Okay. So what's it, which one's an outlier? The one that's all the way at the top. I'm going to zoom in for a second. Okay. I so I don't write on it again. So which one's an outlier long? All the way over here? That's an outlier? Okay, so long says this one could be an outlier. Okay. Which point is that? Twenty twenty nine, right? Right here. I'll make a list up here. Outliers. Twenty comma twenty nine. Are there any other outliers? No, right here. Which one? Twelve twenty four. Okay, you're close. I mean. You're close. Okay. Well, let's look at let's look at our data. Okay, it's close to 13, but not quite 13, right? And it's close to 24, so let's find something that's close to that on our data, right? 13, 20, that's not it. 13.5, that's not it. Too big, too big, too big, too big, too big, too big. Maybe, right? Maybe. Okay. The ordered pair matters, okay? Because we're going to see if they're influential or not. We are going to remove these points, so I need to make sure I remove the correct point. So I need to know the exact order pair. So this one is? Good. 
Okay. So those are our two outliers, correct? Yeah. Yeah. So now that we know those two outliers, let's try to classify them. What type are they? Is it X only? Is it Y only? Is it X and Y jointly? Is it X and Y together? Okay, so take a moment. Don't shout it out. So take a moment. Don't shout it out. One thing that might help you be drawing the cloud. Let me draw the cloud real quick. That's got to be my cloud, right? Then what else helps me? Where do I draw my lines? Underneath. Okay. One underneath, right? And one on top. One above. Okay. Next to it, right? So X only, right? Y only. Right? Where are the corners again? X and Y, what's on the center? Jointly. So the green one, this is? X and Y. And the blue one is? Jointly. Good job. Okay. So those are our types of outliers. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Wonderful. Any questions about how I classify those outliers? Any questions? Now I'm going to remove this uh, this this outlier grid just because it kind of gets in the way. So I'll erase the X. There you go. Cut it off. All right. Next thing that we need to do, we need to make a regression equation. So regression equation. We need to enter our data into list one and list two. Right. I right, some stuff there already. Let me clear this out real quick. I'll show you how to do some cool things with the calculator today. Clear that, thank you. Way to be ready for class, huh, guys? Alright. So, auto refresh. Remember to enter list at stats, and then my calculator thing's messing up. Give me a moment. So, enter that, enter that information to list one and list two. Hey, there we go. You guys can see that, right? Quick enough? No? What about now? Better. Okay. Oh. So let's enter our information to list one and list two. So stat, edit. Mine is already in here. Now, as you're going through, take special care to uh, make sure that the, the lists are entered in order and the lists end up being the same length. If the lists do not end up being the same length, then you know you can't possibly have all the data entered in. All right? So did we all have that stuff entered in already? Yeah? Okay, good. So I can quit, stat. Oh, get ahead of myself. So I can quit, stat, calc, four. Enter, enter, enter a bunch of times. And we have our... Come on. Oh, it's not auto refraction. Here we go. And our regression equation is, there we go, 1.135, 7.15, .15, or 7.16. And our R value is 0.88. So did anybody not get that? Did anybody not get that for the regression equation? Anybody? Okay. So I'm going to write that down. So um, y equals, let's go with 1.14. Is that OK? x plus. 7.16 and r equals 0.88. Right? Mm -hmm. I thought you could. Mm, I said you can round. The more you round, the less exact it's going to be. Okay? Did you write all those down, Faith? No, I just did 1.13. 1.13, that's fine. But I would actually do 1.14 because it's a 5. Uh, it's not like it didn't tell you not to round. I don't want to see you guys rounding this to like 1 and 7, okay, or like 1.1. I want you to go with these two spaces, if not more. Okay. But I said that's around as in context of taking, making sure you don't write this as 1 and 7, just for a reason. Okay. Good question. Okay. Good question. Okay. Good question. 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 Good question
question. All right. Are there any questions? Okay. Now, I want to graph my line of regression on, on our paper says draw the line of best fit, right? I want to draw this line of best fit on my graph. I want it to show up on here, right? So how do I do that? Do I just, do I just draw a line that goes through these points and call it good? Do I just start here and draw a line and say, hey, there it is? No. If it's this point, if it's this equation, I need to find two points that make this equation true, right, Maddie? Okay. Luis, how do I find two points that make this equation true? Yep, how do I find two, two points that make the equation true? Nope. Good, Bruno. We put in something for the x. Okay? I would pick 10 and 20.5. Why do you got to pick those two? Good. The, the biggest and smallest point on the graph, right? 10 is my smallest point. 20.5 is my biggest point. So I would plug those two in for x. So my first point is going to be found by doing this. y equals 1.14 times 10 plus 7.16. I kind of went to get backwards. 6. Sorry about that. 10. And then I figure out that equals 1.14 times 10 plus 7.16. 1.14. Oops. 0.14, the smallest point in my graph, times 10, plus, okay, you can also use the smallest one there if you want to, plus 7.16, I got 18.6, or 18.56, right, does that make sense, 18.56, yeah, long did you plug that in or no, yeah, okay, so that means at this point, 10 comma 18.56, that's on my regression line, right? So I can plot that 10, 18.56, by somewhere in there. Right. So that point's on my regression line. Right? I also said we can try 20.5, so let's plug in 20.5, so 1.14 times 20.5 plus 7.16. 1.14 times 20.5, what does that equal? Plus 7.16. Got 30.53. So that means the other point I'm using is 20.5 comma 30.53. Right? So over here to 20.53 and 30.53. Probably somewhere in there. And I can take my ruler, hope my meter stick is long enough. Yeah, I went and got a meter stick out. Oh, it's still not long. So I can take the meat, I can take my ruler out, and what can I do with those two points? Connect them. Get some really strong magnets and put them on the back of this meter stick. And now we've drawn our line of best fits on our graph. Easy enough? No? It's kind of long, isn't it? Yeah, okay. All right. Now, as for some of you, you don't want to draw lines in your graphs. So let me show you another way. All right? You take your calculator. Yeah. So here I have my calculator. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the Y equals button. I'm going to type this equation in. 1.14x plus 7.16. Okay. So that equation is typed in. David, you got a question? No? Okay. Get your calculator. <laughs> okay, good. Okay, so I have that equation typed in, right? Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit second Y equals. And you'll get a page that's called stat plots. Okay? Well, list one, list two, they make what's called a stat plot, a statistics plot. Right? So I'm going to hit enter on number one. Okay? And I'm going to turn my stat plot on. Right now it's off. I'm going to hit enter on on. And now my stat plots is on. Okay? 
X list is L1, good. Y list is L2. I could change these if I wanted to. If I didn't use list three or list four, I could change them right now, but I'm not going to because that's where I entered my data. Okay? Next up, I'm hit zoom. Zoom is two buttons to the right of Y equals. It's right in the middle of that top row, that top row of buttons. I'm going to hit zoom, and I'm going to hit number nine because it's zoom stats. Okay. And guess what they put on my graph now? Okay. I have the dots made from list one and list two, right? And I have the regression line. Okay. So if you're one who doesn't want to draw lines, you can do that as well. Okay. Does that make sense? Okay. And now, instead of plugging in numbers, if you go to your table, second graph, go to your table. Okay. Look, 10. 18.56. The calculator is doing the work for me now, isn't it? Okay. What do you think if I go down to 20 and a half? What do you think it's going to say? There is no 20 and a half, is there? Right? We could change our table set, or I could use 20. Right? 20 is at 29.96. Right? My line looks like it goes to there. It's about 30. So I could use a different point as well. Okay. So I wouldn't necessarily have to use 20 and a half. I could use any other point in the table. Okay. I do not know. I'm going to. We didn't hit zoom nine. Zoom nine. And I'll zoom in on your stat plot. All right. Are there any questions about how we drew the line of best fit? Any questions? Now comes the fun stuff. Well, not yet. We'll get there in a second. What I want you to do is without actually doing this, without actually removing any points, I want you to predict how removing 20 point, 20 comma 29 and how removing 12.2 or 12.9 comma 24.1, how that will affect our line of best fit. Now we are not removing them both at the same time. Okay? Jessica, we are going to remove them one at a time. So we'll, we'll remove this one first. And then we'll remove that one. Okay. So what will happen if we remove this point? What do you guys think? You think the, the line will go down or go up? Remember, negative residual, right? So do we need more negatives or less negatives to replace this? We need more negatives to replace this, right? So the line will go down. So the slope be steeper or less steep? If eight says the slope will be less steep. If my line moves down, right, my line moves down. My line moves down. Steeper or less steep? Less steep. What will happen to our R value? Our correlation? Increase? Decrease? Will removing this point make our cloud narrower or fatter? Removing it. Right now my cloud goes like this, right? That one narrow cloud. So if I remove that point, won't it make my cloud then fatter, respectively? So what will I do for our value? Decrease. It'll make our relationship weaker. What about this point? If I remove that point, what's going to happen? It'll go up. Okay. So I think we did that backwards here. Positive, right? So I need more positive residuals, don't I? So this one will go down. It's got to make more positive residuals, right? So that means this one we should have went up, making more negative residuals. Yeah. Argue better, man. No? Okay. Will this one, removing this one, increase or decrease our R value? Will removing this one increase or decrease our R value? Would it make us closer to one or further from one? Closer to one, right? Because that one makes our, our oval fatter, doesn't it? Right? So, write down your predictions. Say, if I remove 20, 29, my slope will be this and this, and my R value will become this. Okay? If I remove 12.9 and 24.1, my slope will change this way, my R value will change this way. Write something down. Take a prediction. Get involved fast or something. Whenever I carry a meter stick, I just think I want to break it. You know if I break it, it'll be bad for me. I would. 
Or I just blame it on you. Love the sound of pencil and paper. Awesome. Mm. Are we got a prediction of the way? Okay, which one's going to be more influential? The outlier in the green black or the outlier in the blue black? Blue black. Blue black. Blue black. Blue black. Okay. Who thinks the blue one will be more influential? Mm -hmm. Who thinks the green one will be more influential? Thank you all. Eight of you who voted. Okay. I think Marvin voted that one. He's not here today. No, he's in Mrs. Western Face's room. All right. Check Miss West Trainer or the library. I always think I'm supposed to go back. Okay. All right. So, if more was voted for the green one, some was voted for the blue one, we will see. All right, now if you turn your papers over, here it says example 15. I think it's 15 or 16. 15. Okay. Example 15 says go into list 1 and list 2 and delete 20.29. 20 20, 20 okay, 20 count 29. So, if I delete this, what am I doing to my scatter plot? So, what am I doing? Am I, am I leaving this in there or am I taking it out? We're taking it out. Okay, so I'm going to go into my scatter plot and I'm going to remove that point so it's no longer there. Okay, now you need to be very careful when you're doing this. Okay, the, for, the way I do this is I first find my x value. I first find 20, and I, now I'm not in my scatter plot, I'm in, I'm in my table. So stat, edit. I go to my x values and I find 20, all right, because I want to delete 20 comma 29, where 20 is the x value. So find the x value of 20. Oh, here we go. And make sure it's across from 29. Okay. If I find the 20 that's not across from 29 and I remove that one, it'll mess the whole thing up. Okay. So I got to make sure it's across from, so 20, 29, make sure they're across from each other. Okay. And then hit delete. So hit delete on 20. That list got shorter, didn't it? Okay, yours might look a little different because mine was at the end. All right, because I had the same list I used last hour. Okay. Now I'll go immediately across to where across from where 20 used to be and delete 29. Because it's 20 comma 29. Said delete. It'll go away. Now my lists are back to the same length, aren't they? That tells me I deleted one from each list. If you do not delete one from each list, then your 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 uh, linear regression will not work anymore. So let's say mismatch dim or dim mismatch, depending on your calculator. All right, that means domain mismatch. That means one list is longer than the other one. Okay. Now quit out. Stat. Calc. Four. Enter. And we get a new regression equation. So we removed the x and y outlier, right? What happened to our r value? Decrease got weaker, didn't it? Okay. What happened to our slope? Slope bigger or smaller? Slope is bigger, right? So slope changed, right? So what effect did removing this point have on the regression line? Made the correlation weaker, right? Made the slope, made the slope bigger, made the slope, S word, steeper, right? So now we have a steeper slope and a weak correlation. 
Does that make sense? So the effects it had made a steeper slope and a weaker correlation. Now we want to graph it, right? We want to put we want to graph this this uh, this line on our on our scatter plot. Okay. I want to graph it on here, right? So I'm going to graph it on there. There's a couple things I can do. Okay. I need to find two points, don't I? Right. I can find you find two points. Yeah. How do I find two points? Good, plug in X and Y. Last time we used 10 and 20.5, might as well use them again. So 1.40 times 10 plus 3.35. 1.40 times 20.5 plus 3.35. So we'll plug those both in and we'll see what we get. So this one we get 17.35, and this one we get 32.05. Right? So that means my two points are 10 comma 17.35, which is the top one, and 20.5 times 32.05. Right? So I can I can plot those, can I? 10 times 17.35 is like right here. 20 and a half times 32 is like right here. Take my ruler. Put my straight edge on the ruler. Okay. Come on, guys. Just laugh at how bad they fail. I wish I was left handed because this would be so much easier if I was left handed. So all you left-handed people, you were meant to be math teachers. Sorry. I'm drawing my ruler. I can't help but stick on my tongue either when I draw the ruler. So I said, we're like, all right. There's our line. Right? Does that make sense? Big change or little change? Little, little change, but it changed, didn't it? Okay. So we drew our line, we used some points. Now, would you consider this an influential point? Okay, who says yes? Okay, who says no? No. Not a lot of people say no. Okay. Sure. So this is an influential point because we did two things. We changed our slope and we changed our... Correlation coefficient. And we change our slope by a decent amount. Can we change it by about a third? About a fourth, sorry, not a third, a fourth. Our y intercept changed a lot. I know it's not shown on this graph, but it did. Are there any questions about, about how we got that? So, yes, I would call this an influential point. Right, we did, we changed our slope by a considerable amount, and we changed our value, and our value a lot, a lot less. Okay. Are there any questions? Any questions? Okay. Now, this next one, we want to see if 12.9 comma 24.1, we want to see if that's influential, right? So do I leave 20 comma 29 out? No, we have to do what? Put it back in. Okay? So we've got to put 20, 20, 29 back in. Now, in order to do that, you need to go back into your list one, list two. Okay? And the order in these lists doesn't matter. So you can go down to the bottom, to the last entry. And sometimes you miss it. Okay? We get the dashed lines. Okay. And now I just took out 20, 29, so I want to add that back in. 20 is my x. It goes in list 1. Justin, you doing this? 
29 is my Y. It goes in list two. And now I have my list back to the way it was before, before I did this, right? My list is back the way it was. Okay. <clears throat> it then tells me that I, the, the, the problem says I want to make sure that 12.9 12 comma 24, I want to know if that's influential, right? So what do I do with 12.9 comma 24? Take it out, okay? So it might not be in the same spot in your list as it, as it is in mine. I find 12.9, I delete 12.9, I immediately go right across to where, where 12, right across from 12, where 12.9 used to be, and hopefully I find 24.1, I now delete 24.1, and my lists hopefully are the same length, and we all done that. We all deleted 12.9 comma 24.1. Yes? No? Have you done that? Yes. Yes. Jamaira, why are you so annoying? Guys, it's a fairly easy process, right? Right? If you know how to do linear regression, this is fairly easy, isn't it? It just takes some time. So, I understand where you're coming from. All right. I'm going to leave this one up here. I'm going to erase this just like I did last time. Okay, I have my list in order. I delete the ones that I'm supposed to. I'm going to quit out. Stat calc four again. Find my linear regression. And now we get this. Y equals 1.24x plus 5.49. My new R value is 0.92. Now, right now, we could probably make a conclusion about which one's more influential. Okay. If I look at the blue one, we only went up by 0.1 in our slope, didn't we? Right? Our R value went up by 0.04. Right? Look at the green one. We went up by, two, by 0.26 in our slope. Our R value went down by 0.05. Which one changed more? Did going from the black to the green change more, or going from the black to the blue change more? Black to green changed more, didn't it? This one changed more, didn't it? So which one was more influential? The green outlier, right? This outlier, not that one, this outlier right here was more influential because it had a bigger effect on both our slope and our R values. Okay, does that make sense? Let's plot the points so we can see that we can see on the graph as well, right? So I want to I want to plot the points again. I want I want to find two points on this line so I can graph down there. So I pick what? How many points do I pick again? Two. two. Yeah, the ones we've been using have been ten and twenty point five. So one point two four times ten plus five point four nine. One point two four times twenty point five plus five point four nine. And we'll get two y values. Got my one. We get seventeen. Point, I'm just going to call it 17.9. We get 30.9. So almost 18, almost 31, right? Right? So what's this top point? 10 comma what? 17.9. What's this bottom point? 30.9, right? So I got those points, the x's are what you plug in, the y's are what you get out. So that I can plot those points, 10 comma 17.9, right about here. 20.5 comma 30.9, need to move my calculator screen. 20.5 comma 30.9 is like right here. Okay. 
Which dots are closer to the original line? Or the original line flat? The blue ones or the green ones? Blue ones, right? Kind of going along with that trend about less influential. I think I got it. I think you know. You just want to be YouTube famous like me. Mm. All right. So the blue one isn't as far away, or isn't as big of a change from the black one as the green one is. It green one is 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 it? Isn't it? Don't know which word to use there. All right. But the green one moved more, didn't it? So since removing this point caused my line to move more, that makes that point more influential. Okay. Right, when I removed the green one, my, my X and my L are both, right? The line moved more, went from black to green. Okay? So that means that point was more influential. So you're saying every time the one that's farther apart is not the one that's further further away is the most. In oh, you're talking about. I'm talking about from the. Oh, like from trying to pick with my points that I have. Yeah, like if you didn't do the line difference yet, and you just made a prediction like you did, the one that's not the farthest would be more influential. I don't want you to get in the habit of just picking based on where they're located. Okay. I want you to actually go through and calculate it out. It's not that difficult a process. It'll take some time, but it's not that difficult a process. I think you can do it without just kind of guessing. Good question. Guys, okay, Faith asked. Just trying to make a rule based on where these are located and which one's more influential, right? And you can't do that. You've got to calculate it. Okay, you have to figure out the regression. Okay. Now, do you need to graph the lines every time, Faith? No, you don't. All right? You can just look at the equations and figure out which one's more influential. All right? All right. Now, would you guys consider 12.9 times 24.1 influential? Would you guys consider 12.9 times 24.1? Would you consider that influential? Kind of subjective, isn't it? Okay. You can make an argument either way. You could say, yes, it's influential because my slope did change. I did make a stronger correlation. Okay. Or you could say, no, it's not influential because the slope didn't change that much. The correlation didn't change that much. Okay. So it's kind of based on your argument that you make. Right. So if this is not just a yes or no question. It's a yes because this. Or no, because this. Okay? Make sure you include that because, especially with the test. Right? Because that because is going to be determined with if you're right or wrong. Right? Alright, are there any questions? Any questions? Okay. How could I have used my calculator to show these lines? So instead of graphing them on, on my graph, what could I have done with my calculator? Because remember my calculator, we have the original line in there, right? We have the original line in there, don't we? So if I want to put the other two in there, what should I do? Good. If I go to my Y equals page, I can plug in this one. 1.40x plus 3.35. And I can plug in this one. Notice I'm leaving the other ones in there, right? So I can compare them. If I don't leave my original in there, can I compare it? No, I need it there. Okay. I'm going to plug in 1.24x plus... 5.49, and when I look at my graph now, there will be a mess up. Nah, you know what's going to happen. Okay, now when you graph yours on your own, you will notice, okay, you will notice that the lines are graphed in a certain order, right? The lines, the order the lines are graphed in is the order you enter them in. So the first line graphed is the first one you entered in, is Y1. The second line graphed is Y2. And the third line graph is y3. So that's kind of how, you need, how you're going to be able to figure out which one is which. Okay. Now, if you watch these get graphed, you'll notice that, that this first one down here was the first one. This one right here was the second one. And that was the third one. Okay. So if you follow on that graph, you would see that the second one we plug in, 1.40x plus 3.35, changed the most, which kind of is the same thing we see right here. Now, the graphs don't look exactly the same because this is a, more of a square window than this is more of a rectangular window on our paper. All right, are there any questions about influential points? 
Any questions?